Hello, this is Dr. Eric Bricker and thank you for watching A Healthcare Z. Today's topic is the book Blind Spots by Dr. Marty McCary. And this is a review of his new book. Now, I have no financial connection to Dr. Marty McCary, but he is a friend of mine and he asked me to review this book. I've read his previous two books. They are fantastic. So I wanted to review this book as well. Now, this book, Blind Spots, is about fake science in healthcare. Now, what do we mean by fake science? We mean things that we thought were science, that appeared to be science, but in fact were opinion, that were not science at all in healthcare. What are some examples of that? Well, Dr. McCary goes into excruciating detail about examples of that. So one, the American Academy of Pediatrics used to recommend no peanuts for children under the age of three because they wanted to avoid peanut allergies. This was back in the 90s and early 2000s. Guess what? Recommendation based on no studies whatsoever. There was no scientific evidence for that recommendation. And guess what happened? Because these young children were not exposed to peanuts, it actually made peanut allergies more frequent and more common. So eventually a study was actually done. It took a while to do it. And when that study was done, they compared giving kids under the age of three peanuts and not giving kids under the age of three peanuts. And guess what happens? When you gave kids under the age of three peanuts, it decreased their peanut allergies, the incidence of peanut allergies by 86%. Go figure, that's why you need to do real science. Okay, next example, hormone replacement therapy. Many of you might remember this. Back in the early 2000s, hormone replacement therapy was given a lot for menopausal sim symptoms in women. But then there was this study released that found that hormone replacement therapy increased the risk of breast cancer. Ah, one small problem. The study didn't prove that at all. In fact, it found that there was no significant impact on the incidence of breast cancer for people taking hormone replacement. It was, it was insignificant. So it was not that hormone replacement therapy uh, increased the incidence of breast cancer. It was insignificant, but it was posted or it was pr um, published as significant anyway. Why? Why would, why would, we, why would they do that? Because the, the person who s did the study on hormone replacement therapy and breast cancer had just decided in his own mind six years prior that hormone replacement therapy was bad and it needed to stop. And so he just happened to perform a study that confirmed what he already thought, which was untrue. So next up, dietary cholesterol causes heart disease. Everyone thought this. Okay, well, if you eat foods high in cholesterol, then it's gonna cause heart disease and you're gonna have a heart attack. Guess what? That was never based on a study. There was a nutritionist back in the 1950s and 60s who just decided that a diet high in saturated fat and cholesterol led to heart disease. But in fact, that, and this, was a, this nutritionist himself was from the University of Minnesota, and he did a study with some other colleagues in 1973 that actually proved the opposite, that actually proved that there was no increased incidence of heart disease when people ate a diet high in uh, fat and cholesterol and they hid the results of the study for 16 years because they didn't like the results. And as a result, there was this huge wave of, oh, fat and cholesterol are bad, fat and cholesterol are bad. And guess what? The American Heart Association went along with it, but when the evidence was finally released, the American Heart Association actually reversed their decision. So originally they did the study in 73. It was finally released in 89. And then finally in 2015, the American Heart Association actually reversed their opinion that dietary cholesterol causes heart disease. In fact, it does not. So next up, the point here, and there's many other examples. The point here is that there are many situations in healthcare where recommendations are made that are not based in science, but they are masquerading as science. So it is made to appear as though it is science, but in fact, it is not. And the book goes on with many more examples in regards to antibiotics being harmless. In fact, antibiotics uh, are harmful to the microbiome uh, bacterial flora of your intestines too. 
that you need surgery for appendicitis. Apparently you can actually treat an appendicitis with antibiotics and you don't need surgery. Next up, they knew, researchers knew that screening for HIV in blood back in the 80s and early 90s was a good idea and they didn't do it. And it took a while for them to actually start screening blood for HIV, but there was tremendous resistance against doing that, even though there was evidence saying that they should. Okay, and again, it goes on and on. This book, Blind Spots, has 407 sources at the back. So you can, I, looked, I went through and I counted them, okay? So it is immaculately researched. Now, again, we do not want to throw out the baby with the bathwater. There is good science as well, absolutely. The point is not that science is bad. It's that fake science is bad. And there is gobs of real science in medicine that has tremendously helped people. So for example, so, and it, so you can't say, oh, well, all antibiotics are bad. No, we treat stomach ulcers with antibiotics today and it works great. Before, they used, used to literally lop off huge portions of a, of a person's stomach. They would literally cut out huge portions of a person's stomach to remove the ulcer. You don't have to do that. They did a scientific study and they found a real scientific study and they found that you don't need to cut out the person's stomach. You can just give them antibiotics and it is a much better way to treat stomach ulcers. And I personally have treated lots of people with stomach ulcers with antibiotics and I've seen them get better and it's wonderful. So there's many instances where real science is wonderful. Okay, so what's the solution? How does one differentiate between the real science and the fake science? Well, the, the book gives a couple of examples of what's actively being done today. So interestingly, Specifically in the case of whether or not, believe it or not, breast implants were causing all sorts of medical problems, that got up to, you know, there was lawsuits around it, yada, yada, yada. And interestingly, the court that was seeing this case actually created a scientific panel to independently investigate the research in the literature. And that was super important because then the, the court appointed reviewers of the science did not have financial interest in it and they didn't have career risk in it as well. So this is where there is many situations where, listen, everybody, doctors, scientists, researchers, we're all humans and all humans are hugely flawed. So that is why we might, instead of just taking the medical establishment or a uh, word for it, we in America have a wonderful system that is referred to as checks and balances. It is the genius of America because absolute power corrupts absolutely. And when you have an organization outside of medicine to look at what medicine is doing, I would argue that's incredibly helpful. So do we need to have like all scientific inquiry examined by courts in America? Maybe yes, maybe no, but as we all know from Justice Brandeis, that sunlight is the best disinfectant. It is super important to have checks and balances when reviewing science. And then just on a micro level, listen, doctors themselves, when they're interacting with patients, they need to know when the information that they're giving, that, that they're giving patients is just an educated guess. It's just an educated opinion versus whether there's actually evidence for it. And making that distinction and just let, you know, because there's certain situations where you don't have the evidence and you're like, look, we still need to do something. And here is my sort of best guess or my best opinion about that area. But at least you're letting the patient know that it's not based on science, that it's based on an educated opinion. Whereas in other situations, it is based on science. And that is what I wanted to share with you today. Thank you for watching A Healthcare Z.